Your customers are craving a great tasting, authentic pizza experience. That's why we offer Primo Molino Neapolitan style flour, an affordable, high performing flour that's a great alternative to imported Italian double zero flour. It's milled right here in North America, so you can always count on authentic crust texture and taste without the imported flour price. Using an imported flour today? Check out ardentmills.com to request a sample and try it for yourself. Hey, and welcome back to Checking In With. I am your host, Denise Greer, Executive Editor here at Pizza Today. And with me is the one and only Editor-in-Chief, Jeremy White. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, how's it going, Denise? <laughs> Not bad. It's Monday, so for It is Monday. Us, so, yay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, so on the call with us today is Sean Dempsey from Dempsey's uh, Brewery and Pub in uh, South Dakota. And you have two locations there now after a couple of years. Right on. Good morning. Good morning. It is morning for you still, right? <laughs> Noonish, so I mean, it's kind of, it can go both. Yeah. So <laughs> tell us what's been going on um, with the with the restaurants and, uh, you know, how things have been going lately. Lately. Lately, yeah. Lately, they've been fantastic. I mean, we're starting to um, we're starting to see some thaw up here. I was just talking to these earlier about the weather and about how we haven't gotten that much snow. And it's been the last two weeks that we've gotten this big cold rush, which is pretty normal for about five months of the year. So it's been weather wise. It's been nice. I've only had to shovel up my walk a few you know, a few times. So uh Pretty nice on that. Both stores are doing pretty all right. Uh, my Watertown location is called Dempsey's Brewery Pub and Restaurant. She's a big 180 seater uh, uh, behemoth, and uh, yeah, she's been doing. She's been holding her own pretty well, especially the last few months. Uh, my other one was a new concept called Danger Von Dempsey's Pizza and Brew House, and that's in Aberdeen, South Dakota. Almost two years old, uh, and that's been doing better than well, better than the pub in Watertown for sure. As a carrier, as a as a pizzeria only model, it's been been crushing it, honestly. Yeah. So I'm pretty, pretty excited about that. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Uh, I, I am curious because y'all are used to cold there. You, do, mm -hmm. you, uh, do, you, do you keep your outdoor seating? You have outdoor seating, right? Do you keep that yeah. open longer? Uh, <laughs> during, uh, or no, we have cold, but we like, the, we like heat a bit more. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I gotcha. Um, now your uh, carryout spot has been open two years and you say it's been doing a little better than, um, than the brewery. Did you have to change a lot at, um, at your main, you know, your 180 seat restaurant, um, you know, for COVID? Oh, absolutely. So we were, we were more fortunate than a lot of, than a lot of states around us. We were forced to shut down by a municipality for about three weeks to a month. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when we reopened, it was, it was half cap, um, you know, mass mandates by Jeremy. Where, where do you, hey, Jack, you welcome back. I don't know but, what happened there. I think my internet's not real great. The magic today, guys. <laughs> no, but it, it was it was a lot of the the restrictions came in, but we were able to be open for for a lot of it, and it, it really you know we never really closed. We just went to take out only in Watertown, but with going from 180 seats to 96, it's been you know pretty challenging on that part for that first chunk of the year. But you know we got through it. Yeah, Aberdeen. Have you done anything fun. to? encourage your customers to carry out your product oh absolutely versus ask for delivery or obviously with a reduced dining capacity what, what are you doing in that regards uh we saw a lot of push from our local chamber about just kind of going and you know grabbing your food to go dining more mm -hmm. you know, get home kind of thing so that was a good local push but otherwise it's been our social media posts have been pretty much blaring about how takeout is really easy we installed curbside along with i'm pretty sure everybody installed curbside but we was it was still it's a really good thing that's never going away now and uh, yeah. We've been running a few promos with the same kind of thing about how you get a discount by getting curbside. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah, that's the thing. Do you think once dine-in opens back up to 100% one of these days down the line, you feel like the takeout curbside will still be a thing that's so. just around forever? I think I saw this. Uh, it was uh, I hate to say I saw a meme on Facebook, but I saw something about 90s kids not in, not not creating curbside pickout. And how could that not happen? Because it's the coolest idea ever. You know. <laughs> no, I think I think it's uh, I think it's a permanent fixture now. Yeah. Well, let's talk beer because I know. Uh, well, I just always <laughs> like to talk beer, but uh, you know, you were talking a little bit about your beer business. Um, you know, beer has been really. You know, pizza's done really well with the pandemic, and it seems like beer has also done really well. What oh, kinds of things have you done with your beer uh, with your beer business to, um, you know, to keep it thriving with the pizza? Well, one thing we saw, especially when we went to that carry when we went to a carry only model in Watertown. 
uh, is we were able to start canning our product. We had probably 40,000 of these 16 ounce aluminum cans we'd gotten right before this all went down. So we're canning all these different beers that we're doing and then we're promoting specials with your carry out peaches, your carry out items, you know, with a four pack of our open door IPA or our rampant lion root beer or, or mix and match. And I saw a huge push in that. Um, you know, that, that was a really, a really great way to couple a couple things together and get people excited about it. Uh, you saw the distro really dry up. It's hard to sell beer and kegs to restaurants when the restaurants are not open. Yeah. So that was another way for us with, uh, I mean, we, we have a smaller brewery, 10 barrel system, three of those 10 barrel fermenters, but it was a way for us to kind of keep pushing that beer through uh, with both stores not having to waste any. We saw some of our friends up north that were, uh, they were forced to dump about half their batches of beer because they sat for three, four, five months. Oh, uh, and that was in Minnesota, mm. just, just, you can't sell enough of it fast enough. You got a big 30 barrel fermenter, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah and canning you know canning's been huge here too and working with uh different restaurants and things uh mm -hmm. like they've they've worked out really well with the, the canning operations we've um, got so a little october self canner so we've got we can can about three to four cans a minute but it's um huh. it's intense it's a it's a lot of uh for that period it was a lot of the uh, the core staff doing uh all night uh uh canning operations so <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um, now your pizza, you're, you've always been known for your creative uh, pizzas, you know, you're always coming up with stuff for uh, the International Pizza Challenge and different things like that. Uh, I saw you uh, adapted one of your, uh, one of your specialty pizzas for Lent. Um, and I just, I just found that really neat because I, I think that that is a really good thing to do because a lot of people do, um, you know, do alter their diet for Lent. Um, so I thought that was pretty neat. Tell us about what you did. Yeah, so we do, we started this promotion a few years back and it's called, uh, uh, it's called Pizza of the Week and it's new pizza every week kind of thing. Nothing, nothing too crazy, but uh, our, crew, our crew really likes to dabble and play with weird, crazy stuff that you'd never put on a menu, but you could run for a weekly special. Uh, and so actually that one pizza that I'm fe uh, featuring for Lent right now is called the Fisherman's Hangover. And it's actually <laughs> nice. invented by, by my sous chef, or not my, he used to be my sous chef. He's actually my exec chef now in my other store in Aberdeen. Um, and that's Michael Bacon. He started doing this like garlic cream scampi sauce, uh, shrimp, crab, uh, shredded carrots on top, using a little bit of uh, garlic and, and mozzarella. And it's, it's, we sell the air living hell out of that pizza. During oh. Lent, it, it, it flies out the door. Yeah. Wow. See, for me, and, and for me, I'm allergic to shellfish. So I, I'm, I'm like, sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, all right, let it fly. <laughs> That's, That's, That's got to be a bad feeling to sell something and sell it well and not be able to even personally it's, sample it's, it yourself. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's frustrating for me because there's certain things yet yeah, for, for all those items. It's like, I, I love getting creative and playing with different flavor profiles and kind of balancing them together. And that's like one entire genre that's just kind of always can't touch that one. Off and, limits. Yeah. yeah. You just have to look at it and say, all right, guys, don't mess it up. Now, Jeremy, I was talking to Sean a little bit before we uh, before we hit record, and mm -hmm. uh, he is he is going to be competing in uh, International Pizza Challenge, bring, bringing his best game. Excellent! And really? he's going to have uh, somebody on his team develop something for the three sixty five. Uh, Great challenge! So I think that's pretty. So cool. So the IPC in Vegas, what category did you register for? Uh, this one I'm doing uh, non traditional. Non traditional. Okay. I think last two years ago, I did Roman. Yeah. Well, we, we won't throw any teasers saw, out about what's going around in your head because <laughs> no, no. you don't want to tip off the, the, the competition. But have you already begun experimenting some trial and error and trying to figure out what you want to do? Or is it just all up in your mind right now? Oh, we're at this point where it's uh, with, with the Pizza 365 thing you've got. So that one, I'm looking at like presentation, plating, how things around it look. To try okay. to get the entire picture, I think that's uh, that's that's a really a cool idea, and that's giving me time to work on uh, that pizza that I'm going to be taking to IPC. Yeah, so nice. I've been, I've been playing with more of like uh, how to. I'm trying to think the right word for it, how to incorporate my more of my elements of the stuff I'm going to be doing, but I want to do them at the show. I don't want to necessarily like just bring all my ingredients and mm -hmm. have them already done. I mean, I want to. I want some of the magic to be out there, like you know, like maybe I'm I'm sautéing something. I've got a burner out there, or maybe you're doing something. Yeah. With, you know, something more intense without saying what you're going to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, Denise, like you know what I want to see one time, just once, and I don't think anyone will have the courage to do it because they will probably feel let down and feel like they wasted their, their spot. Okay, so full disclosure. I'd like to see one time someone show up in Vegas with literally 
no clue what they're going to make for the IPC <laughs> and just run frantically around upon arrival, grab some ingredients and just throw something together and see how that pans and out. And win. That's the funny thing. <laughs> yeah, that's the important part. And then you have to admit it at the end, like, oh, yeah, no plan going forward for this. Nope. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like, though, that's right. I feel like sometimes we overthink it. Yeah. And I feel like that if we just reacted accordingly, there might be someone out there who just might pull that off at some point in time. Yeah. Who knows? Sean may, he may do it. He may, <laughs> he may come up and be like... I don't know what I'm going to make. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just going to walk around the show floor and see what, see what toppings, you know, that, float my boat. <laughs> I, I think for me, that always be like the worst case scenario when you walk in, like your dough is dead, all your, your, your toppings got confiscated by airport security. Um, and you're like, great, I have nothing. What are we going to do? Yeah. So just to tell you how cutthroat these competitions can be, and I've never seen this happen at our competition because we watch and monitor very closely. I won't say where, I won't name names, but I was in another country a European country a couple of years ago watching a competition and a one of the Japanese contestants had a plate full of um you know I forget exactly what what fish it was had a plate full of seafood that he was going to use and he went to wash some utensils turn his back and someone else literally went over picked it up threw it in the trash and just went on about their day um, they did it intentionally to sabotage this competitor. And I, thankfully, will never see that happen at the International Pizza Challenge. But that just tells you how cutthroat and how serious yeah. these competitors take it. I've gone yeah, Mark is not letting that happen at Expo. No. <laughs> I've heard some stories. <laughs> That's funny. Um, you know, let's hit on real quick. Um, your menu is big. You've got a, you've got quite a, quite a big menu. Um, you know, have you had to shrink it down any um, during this time, or what kinds of things? Because you also rotate your menu pretty often. We do. Uh, I took over. Shoot, what year is it? It's twenty twenty one. So I took over the kitchen in twenty twenty or 2007. I've been there my entire life, but I officially took over the wow. range. I got the menu. It was 141 page behemoth with everything that you could think of, which was insane. So we knocked it down to about 47 items, but during COVID and Watertown, it was pretty much, I think we ended up doing like 20 items. I took things like I couldn't get burger reliably without getting frozen chucks. So we just took it off the menu. Um, yeah. I couldn't get there. There were things that were just so outrageous. You just, you can't make any money on them. Your profit margin so yeah. shocked, but it's just like, you know what? You don't get this this time. Sorry, there's a pandemic going on, but you can get something. So we did. Yeah. We kind of did our here's our here's our daily menu, and it was uh, it was awful. But luckily, wow. I most of those. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's you know, tough. Yep, yeah, and then we rotate our menu every six months. We do a spring, summer, and a winter fall. Yeah. Okay. What are you bringing in for spring? Have you? I uh, know you haven't announced your spring menu yet, but I'm sure it's in the works, right? Uh, yeah, we've been working on a few things. So it's normally lighter fare, more salads, more, more fun festive things. I mean, I don't really have a whole lot on the docket quite yet, but yeah, I figure we still got at least another month until you're like, wow, we really need to get this off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I got you there. And for pizzas, at least we, we always have about 40 or 50 that we kind of rotate 10 on, rotate 10 off. And there's always mm -hmm. those that will go back on the spring menu and then five or six brand new ones that get added on. So yeah, like our walking taco is one of our biggest pizza that people like. That's just a take on a walking taco pizza, but people go absolutely mad for it. Uh, and that one's only available during spring and summer. So yeah. Now what's your, nice. dough, what's your dough style? Uh, I just do a New York style. A New York style. Yep. Oh, and then we cool. introduced, uh, uh, I wanted to play with pans, but I like, I like Detroit's and Sicilian's, but I like, I like the actual like 14 and 60 inch pans that you can kind of find almost anywhere. So we're trying to work mm -hmm. on like, some, you know, doing the white cheddar cheese on the outside of those or, uh, trying to do like some pre or I mean some uh, um, um, trying to make some slow rise on that and kind of make it more like a grandma. But yeah, I mean we're we're trying to like come up with kind of our own signature style on that. I just haven't found anything that I'm really happy with yet. I'm happy with you... smaller things, but they're always like a little too much like one of the others. Yeah, mm -hmm. have you tested it with your customers yet, or is it still just testing? Oh no, with that, that, you that, and that, your that, staff. Yeah, that's that's me and the staff. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. be going to the kitchen like here, try this. Like, oh, it's terrible. <laughs> 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 don't tell anybody. <laughs> Someday soon, the customers. Thank you will for get your brutal honesty. That. <laughs> That's why it won't be on the menu. <laughs> yep. Oh, we do one called the Kamikaze, and it's it's super popular, and it's a it's it's a chef's choice pizza, but it's always something fun, and yeah. it's usually what whoever makes it they have to give parameters. They say things like no shellfish, no spice, you know, not no tomatoes, no no nothing weird on it, something super weird, 
And then whatever that, uh, whatever my pizza chef's working on, they'll be like, oh yeah, I've been working on this great idea for, you know, like a, like a crab rangoon pizza, or I want to play with, um, you know, like, like a, like a pesto based uh, steak pizza. Mm -hmm. Great. We'll make that for him and see how it goes. Yeah. Wow. Now that's adventurous. I would love, <laughs> I would love to try out just sometimes I'll go into a restaurant and I'll tell the server, they'll ask what I want and I'll say, surprise me. I really don't know. Bring me whatever. And, yep. and it's always a lot of fun for, for the staff, I think, to get it, to, get to oh, do that. Yeah. You only get a few, we only, we only got a few kickbacks from that where someone's come and got something they didn't like and just lost their mind about it. And they've been like, oh, you ordered this. Like, I'm sorry. And then you re, you, re, you, re, you know, you remake them a pepperoni and they're fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> well, look, yeah. when, when you ask for that, I don't think you really have a right to complain, especially if you're given the opportunity to, to lay down some parameters. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You get what you get. <laughs> you go really off the rails. Like that's that nacho cheese haggis pizza. You're just like, why would you serve this to a dog, let alone a person? Oh gosh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, haggis doesn't belong on pizza. <laughs> now you you actually came up with a really good revenue stream, a little extra revenue stream uh, during COVID. Uh, tell us about your hot dog stand. <sighs> it's it's just a yeah, yeah it's so hot dog stand. <laughs> So in 2019, my old man was talking about this idea of starting a New York style hot dog cart. And so we, we decided to go with it. We ordered a cart. We got it in. Uh, we were able to open it in June in Watertown. And it, uh, it was one of those things that we started doing, like we ordered like Vienna beef and started doing like straight Chicago dogs, Cincinnati's, Coney's. Uh, and we, we just it was able to hire four new people that got to or four of our employees who were just, you know, front of house staff that couldn't do anything else because we're not open. So they're out there peddling dogs on the street. And it went what I thought it was going to do okay, it went like gangbuster. Like it did really, really, really well. So we're running this thing, you know, five, six days a week for about a three, four month period. And it, it was just, just a great profit route. It was another, it was another great uh, repertoire item to our repertoire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, and it's it has, rolling out in 2021, right? <laughs> oh yeah. It's coming back out. We've actually got two and we're opening a third one. Um, but oh, wow. it's one of those things I have this horrible feeling that I'm, I'm passionate about pizzas and food and stuff like that. And so uh, at some point, uh, my gravestone's going to be like, there'll be, I don't know, not, I shouldn't say your gravestone, the last thing they're going to write on there, but it's going to be something like, you know, like Sean Dempsey, hot dog king of South Dakota. And I'll be like, that was not the take home point. I like pizza. <laughs> Which is not what I wanted, you know? <laughs> well, you're just Billions have of pizza to... served, just like McDonald's, right? Billions of pizza served, but you'll be known as, as the hot dog king. So like, I made a good hot dog. I'll be like, that was your takeaway. That was the one thing I didn't want to take away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that, though. I know a couple in Nashville who opened a Chicago pizzeria, and during their build-out, you know, construction projects always inevitably take longer than you expect, cost a little more than you expect. The contract will tell you June 1st, and it turns out to be August 15th. You know how that goes. So as they were facing that sort of dilemma, that's exactly what they did. They put a Chicago-style hot dog cart right out front during construction, and it brought them a lot of early clientele, created a lot of buzz, helped uh, generate some revenue to finish the build out. And it's like, all right, a hot dog cart. There you go. Yep. And now you have to put hot dogs on the menu, right? <laughs> uh, not quite. So you have a cart for it. I feel like you should call John Budicans and get his recipe for the most disgusting pizza I've ever heard of in my life that has hot dogs, ketchup, and French fries on it. And I think you should <laughs> sell that in South Dakota. At some point, I'm going to get up to Athens and check out its shop. It's, it's been on my bucket list for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there you can walk away with that recipe, and you can indeed become the hot dog <laughs> king of, of, of the Dakotas, not just South Dakota. Yeah. The Dakotas. The Dakotas. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it has been great catching up, Sean. Thanks so much yeah. for uh, coming on the show and, and talking what's happening in your neck of the woods. We appreciate it and uh, wish you the best of luck. Good luck with planning that, uh, that pizza for IPC. We can't wait to, to taste it uh, in Vegas. hot dogs on that pizza is a bad idea. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, I don't advise it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we've hey, ever Sean, seen Sean, thanks dogs. for coming on, buddy. Hey, thanks, guys. Take care. Stay All right, take care. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.